Okay, so welcome back. We just got finished talking about the intro pieces of a spectrometer. And we said the UV Vis spectrometer, like many and all other spectrometers, have a light bulb and it shines on the sample. The sample does something to the light and then the remaining light escapes through and that is seen by the detector of the instrument. And that is what we play off of when we begin to make measurements. One of the nice things about a UV Vis spectrometer, or really any spectrometer to tell you the truth, uh, is the quantitative data that it can provide me. Uh, so again, I don't want to take any assumptions and I want you to uh, make sure that you feel comfortable with the difference between something called quantitative and qualitative. All right. So qualitative are typically observations. These are things that you see or these are structural properties. So for instance, I can have a machine that I can put a sample on and it will tell me the structure of that molecule. How is it made? What shape does it take on? Because these are three-dimensional structures, right? These are real objects. So that's qualitative data. What do I see? What can I report? How is this thing made? What does it look like in a 3D world? All of that is qualitative data. Quantitative data, I like to look at the N in quantitative, and quantitative N means numbers, right? So a UV Vis spectrometer finds its place in the quantitative world. What that means is that UV Vis does an excellent job to measure concentrations. And concentrations mean how much. How much is there? Not is it there, yes or no. That would be qualitative. Qualitative would be, yes, I found it, it is present. Quantitative would be, this is how much that I found when you gave me that sample. So there's a difference. UV Vis spectroscopy finds its home in the quantitative world. So that means numbers, and that means concentrations, and that means how much. So, you know, just like I know, that the lab practical portion of the instrumentation will probably be related to quantitative work. Making standards, making a set of solutions to run, making a calibration curve, finding the unknown concentration of a sample that we provide you, all of that we'll talk about eventually at the end of the lecture videos. But that is some of the things that you want to be thinking about when we go through this lecture theory. Okay? Concentration, I get lazy. Like many people, I don't want to write the word concentration every time. So we use this bracket and inside of the bracket we write an x, a variable, the variable x. That represents concentration. That is the shorthanded version of doing it. All right. So UV Vis finds its home in quantitative work. Uh, we've already mentioned biochemistry loves UV Vis, clinical chemistry loves UV Vis, but it's also now found its home in pharmaceuticals. We can look at proteins and DNA in especially biochemistry world. Solar panels and semiconductors, all of that of course is in the field of electrochemistry and energy. Uh, and now we can even measure micro volumes of sample. We no longer have to have tons of sample to measure. Uh, we do not have this capability in our laboratory. Uh, we can go down to a very small sample volume, uh, meaning uh, we don't need a couple of milliliters. Uh, we can actually get by with about one milliliter now of sample, maybe a half of a milliliter of a sample we can get by with and measure. But we do not have one of those 
one drop spectrometers where we can simply put one drop of solution on and measure it. So keep that in mind when you begin looking at these uh, pieces of equipment, when you begin looking at maybe research topics, when you begin looking at the scientific papers or the uh, research articles. You know, if you're looking for some type of topic or idea to use with them, uh, make sure that these are using normal UV vis spectrometers and not the micro drop spectrometers uh, that are becoming more and more uh, commonplace in a laboratory. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this topic of electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we said we had this electromagnetic spectrum and it represented everything, all waves. Okay, so uh, we first need to talk about a wave because in this spectrum we have the visible portion and right up above we also have the UV portion and we said UV has higher energy because it burns my skin. Visible has lower energy than UV. Okay. Uh, UV, visible, all of this is light. Radio waves, microwaves, that's light energy, believe it or not, it's classified as a light. X-ray, gamma ray, all of that is also labeled, could be labeled as light. All of these have something in common, and that is they are waves. Okay? So let's talk about the definition of a wave. Well, a wave looks just like this, and my hand's going a little crooked. Waves are a little prettier, they're more symmetrical, and all the humps are about the same height. They should be the same height, at least. That's what we call a wave. So when I see colors, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, these colors come to me in form of waves. That's why they're different colors, because the waves are different. Red waves are different than orange waves, which are different than yellow waves. Get it? Well, UV has waves as well. I can't see those with my eyeballs, but instruments like UV vis spectrometers can. That has a wave. Infrared energy has a wave. Microwaves have a wave. Radio waves have a wave. Gamma rays have a wave. X-rays have a wave. They all have waves. The difference are how are the waves made. So here's one version of a wave. Another version of a wave, they can come to me much quicker, like this. And again, they should be symmetrical, and they should all be the same height, but hopefully you get the picture. Uh, the one that I just drew there's more waves there in the same amount of space, right? Okay, well, if I'm seeing more waves, you have to think of a wave as a punch. Okay, so if you're in a fight with a person and they punch here and then they take their time and they punch again, then they take their time and they punch again, uh, those punches might not hurt as bad or the fight might not be as bad, is if you were in a fight with someone that punched, 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 punched over and over and over very, very quick, right? So it's all based in time. Okay, that's what we mean when we say UV has higher energy. Higher energy means quicker punches are happening. So if you're going to get into a fight and you have to choose between fighting the UV or fighting the visible, you better be fighting the visible because UV is coming to the boxing ring and he's really going to lay it in you and he's going to punch over and over and over very, very quickly. We call that high energy. That's why your skin gets burned 
with UV light. Okay, so I'm going to put in parentheses here. This kind of represents UV. These waves that make up UV are coming at you quicker and more often over and over and over and over and over. This would kind of represent visible. Visible is a wave as well. It does punch because it's going to take up for itself. But the punches don't come to you as often. So therefore, the fight that you have to put up is not as bad. And that's why your skin doesn't really get burned with visible light, but it does with UV. So we have to have a better way of explaining the punches. How often are the waves hitting you, right? And we do that by taking a look at the tops of the waves. So the tops of the waves here, if we measure the distance from what we call crest to crest, this is the crest of one and this is the crest of the other. Okay, so if we measure this distance, we can provide you that length. Therefore, we call this a wave length. And here in UV, the wavelength, of course, is much shorter because the punches are coming to me quicker. Visible, the wavelengths are larger, and that's because the punches are coming at me slower. Well, again, I've got an abbreviation that I can use. I don't like to write the word wavelength all the time. So the abbreviation that we use for wavelength is this lambda. So whenever you see this lambda symbol, that means wavelength. Okay? So the UV portion is a window, right? So here's UV. And the visible portion is a window. There's visible. So that means that UV has a window or a range of wavelengths. And that also means that the visible portion has a range of wavelengths that's associated with it. UV has wavelengths of 200 to 400 nanometers. NM, nanometer. And visible has a wavelength range of 400, and we're going to say here 900 nanometers. It goes a little bit higher, but for a UV vis spectrometer, this is what we typically call the working range. It does go a little bit below 200 as far as the UV portion goes, but again, for what our purposes are for the equipment, we need clean cut numbers that are rounded off. That way it's easier for us to remember. So when we talk about the UV portion, we're talking about 200 to 400 nanometers. That basically is the length between the waves. If they range anywhere from 2 to 400, it is labeled as UV energy. If it goes between 400 to 900 nanometer, so again, crest to crest, this is the wavelength. If when I measure that wavelength, if it falls in between 4 to 900, that is what we call the visible region. And that's where my colors come from of Roy G. Biv. So more about this theory in the next video, but this is getting acquainted with a little bit about more details on the electromagnetic spectrum.